these guys in the 80s started, uh, some Mick Henry, I forget what his first name is, started um, Food Not Bombs and they recover food that would otherwise be going to waste and then they would serve it to people. So I used to go to the farmer's market and sit over near the dumpster and before anybody would throw anything away, I'd say, hey, um, I'll take that. Bombs is awesome. They are the bomb, <laughs> and uh, they're all over the country. Uh, I've gone to them in California, Tennessee. My name's Jim Hickson, and I'm a homeless veteran living on the streets in Birmingham, Alabama. They do great service for the community of the homeless. I've been with Food Not Bombs since 2005. A um, uh, small group of people started it, and we had people who would come and go, and then it fell apart for one year, and then Kylie put up a fly. Yeah, like back in high school, uh, I started volunteering at a, uh, a used bookstore called uh, Green Cup, and uh, that got me introduced to uh, zines and uh, a lot of like uh, DIY culture, and, like anarchist stuff. And uh, that's where I found out about Food Not Bombs, and uh, I thought it was a good idea. Did some looking around on the internet and found out that there was a chapter in Birmingham, but uh, they didn't seem to be active anymore. So put up some flyers around town, and then eventually uh, Jeff got in touch with me. And uh, he said we were going to start doing meetings at a coffee shop. And I said, forget the meetings, because we tried that, and we just keep meeting. So we'll just meet down here. So we decided we'd come back to the same spot, and we've been doing this for what, three, I don't know, three years now? We started out going out on Saturdays, going to um, Pepper Place uh, Farmer's Market, standing out in front of the dumpsters, uh, and then around closing time, farmers uh, come out and uh, they'd start dumping their produce that they didn't think, you know, be making it to the next week. And uh, we'd tell them what we were using it for, and more often than not, they would simply hand it over to us. and. Uh, after a while, uh, it just became, uh, you know, it wasn't feasible anymore for us to come up to Birmingham twice a week. And so we've, uh, you know, found other ways of getting food. Uh, I've uh, dumpster dived for a while, getting food uh, from places around where I live. Uh, some food is uh, donated to us. Uh. So I haven't been able to go back to the farmer's market recently, but um, I have still been making the beans and I just, Actually, I'm buying stuff and feeding the economy, which we could go into that later. But um, I do want to make sure that people can count on us being here every Sunday because there's nowhere else that feeds on this day, and this is just our day, and it's a great, fun thing to do. So I've been involved for uh, four or five years now, and uh, over the uh, course of those years, the uh, face of the group has uh, changed quite a bit. We have uh, some folks that you know will come out once or twice, and you know maybe they feel like it's not for them, and, and so they they move on. Other folks come and uh, you know help out for maybe a year or two, and uh, you know, some of us has you know been around the, the whole time. Um, we picked up uh, some folks from uh, the Occupy Birmingham group uh, from uh, our interactions with them uh, when they were active. And uh, so it's always, uh, you know, fun. Like sometimes they'll come out and say hey to us and, you know, hang out here for a while. Because, uh, yeah, like it, uh, it's just like a, a social gathering point. Uh, I wasn't around for it, but I've been told that Five Points used to be much more vibrant. People would hang out here all the time. and. Uh, 
since then that's just you know not been the case and uh i was by the fountain when i was 17 years old i was just a young blood so i don't remember much i was 17 i used to come down here and there were mass four massive gatherings i've seen this really thinned out there were peddlers on the street with handmade jewelry then uh you don't see that anymore uh, the police harass people about peddler's license i don't know if they had licenses back when I was young, but there were people out here peddling handmade jewelry on the street. It wasn't necessarily a place where just homeless people gathered. There were different types of people, people who drove cars. I drove all the way from Gadsden to come to this fountain when I was 17. There were artists here. It was like a place where artists would have fellowship. That's what I remember when I, from when I was a kid. I was scared of homeless people. I remember meeting artists. I think fellowship is extremely important. I was in the military. We worked as a team. As a drug addict, when all of us were trying to get more and find ways of getting more, we came together and there was no motivator like dope. But I've got 90 days clean and sober now, so I have different motivations. You know, today I want to get off these streets. I want to save my friends. And I have a team I work with now, including a young man. I worked with one young man that was 19. I watched his back on the street for, um, Four months. If it weren't for this church feeding us and food not bombs, we likely may have not met. We met, I watched his back, he's a job core, he's at the top of his class. He can do anything he wants in his life. I used to carry him to AA with me and all that because he had a desire to stop drinking. I got a young kid right now out there, he's been living on the streets. We usually come from broken families. And coming here gives us that fellowship where we're family. When we're in the church and breakfast, we're family. I think most of these problems stem in the end of homelessness it comes from broken families. Before there were drugs and alcohol, it came from a broken family. And I think that we get that sense of family when we're here eating together, having fellowship. Whether it's in a church, a coffee house, we get that sense of fellowship. Because this is the only time we really all come together in this large group. You know, we, we run in clusters, we run in teams, we run in like platoons of people. Each of them after something different. Some of them are chasing heroin, some of them are chasing crack, some of them are just trying to get clean and sober and going to meetings like me. But when we all come together as one massive group, that's where we can work with one another and help one another. We come together in places like this. I feel the best part about it is that it's for everybody we don't make anybody pray. We don't ask anybody to pray. And we don't put people down if they do pray. You know, There's nothing like that. We're, we're for everybody. Um, young urban professionals and hobos alike. And people who jump on trains, you know, gutter punks. Well, anybody can come down here and have a meal. And that's what's really so good about it, I think. And uh, the basic idea is that we we want to share food and love with our fellow human beings, and we don't want to drop any more bombs on anybody. That's where the name comes from. And thanks for that part of the group, and give us gave us uh, a way, you know, to uh, express our love for humanity.